A good morning to everyone. Is the Pesach preparations finished late Wednesday afternoon? And as Pesach began, it finally dawned on me the extent of the situation we all find ourselves in. And not to say that I did not know what was going on. Of course I knew. I knew there was a lockdown. But it was just that I was so preoccupied, busy and, and focused on all the Pesach preparations that I'm getting ready for Pesach, that it was it made almost no difference if there was a lockdown or not. But that all changed as Pesach started. And then I realized that what a bracha it has been. That even during this challenging time, there's been such a level of bracha. And for those people who have so sadly suffered illness, sickness, and even worse, death, which unfortunately I know coming from Chicago, from America, from New York, of a number of people who have gone through these terrible situations, it's a different story. But for the vast majority of us, it's really been about a lockdown, a restriction of our movement of going around. And to have it done now is really such a blessing because Hashem could have done it at any time but he chose it now at a time when we anyway would have been so busy getting ready for Pesach where the effect of being locked down of being restricted will have a lesser effect on our lives because we're anyway so busy with getting ready for Pesach this idea that even when Hashem is giving us a marker, even when Hashem is, is punishing us on some level, He still cushions it. He still softens it to show us His love, even at a time where things seem quite dark. I heard a story once of, a, of the father of three great rabbis, of Rav Shimon Schwab, of Mordechai Schwab, and Rav Moshe Schwab. Someone asked one of the sons, what was it about your father that he merited to have three great sons? He himself wasn't a rabbi. What was it about him? Was it something that stood out? And the one son said to the person, yes, there was one thing. He said that like all fathers, there were times when he had to punish us. He would send us to our rooms. He would send us out. But we never went alone. He came with us. As Hashem says, even in your pain, when you're in pain, when I'm punishing you, I'm still with you in your pain. I still feel your pain. My love is still there for you, Hashem says. And that was the point the wine son said. He thinks stood out of what was the merit that his father had to have three sons to become great rabbis. And he received this so clearly in the hull that we say these days. Because we don't say a full hollow. We skip out two paragraphs, unlike all other festivals. During these days of Cholamod and the last two days of Pesach, we don't say full hollow. Why not? Because on the last two days of, of Pesach, we cannot say full hollow. So on Cholamod, not to make it look more important, we also don't say the full hollow. But why on the last days of Pesach do we not say full hollow? So it's brought down because Hashem says, how can you sing full hollow at a time Time when my Egyptian people, my people I created, are being drowned in the sea, are dying. How can you sing for her? So I thought to myself, so what? I get that. We are being killed. But what about us Jews? We just experienced the most awesome, amazing miracle, the spitting of the sea. How can we not sing for her? And the idea is Hashem is sending us this message. And that is that even at a time when he's given a market, when he's given a punishment, he's punishing the Egyptian people, he will sh still make sure to show his love. We can still not sing full hell because Hashem as the father, as the father of the Egyptian people, as our father as, as well, is in pain. Because even when Hashem is punishing us, there's still that love of a father. He still feels our pain. And that realization really was such an eye-opener of how Hashem, even in the darkest moments, even in some of the most challenging times, still manages to shine through His love for us. I wish you all a Chag Sameach.